Welcome back, kids and coaches, to your favorite podcast on the planet, the Brionis Pickleball Podcast. I am your co-host, Caden Nemoff. Joining us today is your host, per usual, Jordan Brionis. What's, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Caden, it's good to have you back in the studio. <sighs> it's uh, nice to be back. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been traveling all over. I know that. We'll get into that. But uh, today, on today's podcast... We're going to talk about um, a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. We got uh, summer plans, Ooh. kind of for the both of us. Yeah, and we have. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, historic match uh, <laughs> on the uh, cha- center court there. Uh, so Caden got to play Ben and Colin. We'll talk about that. It was a close one there. It was indeed. And uh, you know, Yola, Yola Gen Three. Oh yeah. Um, what are we doing? Controversy. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we got we got a lot going on. We got a lot to get to today. But uh, Kaden, why don't you give a little update to the viewers of what you've been up to? And um, yeah, man, where you been at? Yeah. So first and foremost, I uh, just recently played New York. Um, but before I get into New York, I was uh, rocking my fresh new Avalon gear. Ooh. These new uh, white. So just give it a little feel. Give the give the sleeve a little feel right there. Ooh, that is buttery soft right there. Um, but yeah, new Avalon tees are out and they're online, so make sure to go check them out. But yeah, I just spent the last week in New York. Um, I actually went a few days early because I just absolutely love New York. Um, you know, every time someone tells me uh, why I shouldn't go to New York, they always say, "Oh, it's dirty and it's expensive." Mm. Um, but what people have to remember is I'm from San Francisco, so it's just as dirty and expensive. So like, as hey, someone, you're, at, you're right at home. I'm right at home. Exactly. You know, and, oh uh, God. it's honestly, I love New York. So I went out there for three days before the tournament, just, to talking about, uh, APP, APP New York. Yeah. Um, I, I went a few days early. I have a buddy from uh, high school, actually my best friend from high school who now lives out there. Um, and is an actor and trying to make it on Broadway. Oh, really? So, yeah, while I was out there uh, with him, just got to experience a lot of the great New York food, uh, caught a Yankees game, caught a Broadway show called The Outsiders, which um, I hadn't realized it, but once I was, like, sitting there getting ready to watch the show, I was like, holy crap, I've read this book. Oh. Yeah, so it's a book, it's a movie, and now they have a uh, Broadway show on it. It was incredible. I have the song stuck in my head. Uh, right now, I'll sing it for you if you need me to. Um, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, pass on that. Okay, I thought you would. Um, but yeah, uh, and then I played APP New York. Um, played with a guy named Caden Seward in it, and we got 10th. So top 10 finish. Um, not a bad day. We went 3-2 and two in the bracket. We won our first, mm-hmm. lost our second to Jack Monroe and Mario Barrientos, who ended up winning the tournament. Did, did they? They won New York, yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. And Jack has been a partner mm-hmm. of, of yours before. Ex-partner, correct. Um, Still one who, of my best friends in pickleball, though. Who was uh, Silver and uh, Rock? Silver was Eric Pilet and Ben Newell. Mm. Good team. Um, yeah, once I will say uh, for this tournament, one side of the bracket was super stacked and one side was a little bit weaker, and I was on that super stacked side. So mm. a little unfortunate. Went to the back draw. Um, and ended up losing in the match right before uh, the okay. ninth place finish. So we got 10th. All right. Well, that's uh, APP New York. Uh, we're going to get into your PPA. Yeah. Uh, just differences, Kaden. Just, you know, APP, PPA, we know there's two different tours. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you like playing better? And what do you, you know, obviously the talent differential mm-hmm. is wide. Right. I would say, I don't know if that, I don't know if even you would agree with that, but, but also like what, yeah, it's it's slightly different. Um, I will say one thing that really, it doesn't bug me, but it definitely is something that you have to kind of adjust to is that the PPA and the APP use different balls. Um, Mm -hmm. so the Vulcan ball compared to the Franklin ball, um, you know, not huge in difference, but the, the new, the APP New York, Franklin, New York ball that we used is, is super soft. Um, so it was it was well, hot and it was, it was toasty. Oh, it was hot. It was warm, yeah. And like, so that ball like, was just like it felt. It was like a marshmallow. What uh, how how what degrees? It was in the eighties. Oh, it was. Yeah, but out there it gets a little humid. So wow. yeah, I was okay. dripping sweat out there. I, I I think I drip more sweat out there than I do out here when I play. Yeah. Um, yeah. but 
Yes, yeah, so balls a lot softer. And then, of course, you know, I was using the Gen 3, so then I had to switch to the Gen 2. So softball, softer paddle. Well, um, because of the yeah. man, which we'll get to. Right. Just a little bit of an adjustment, but it wasn't really anything too crazy. Um, I do really like the PPA and the APP. Um, you know, they both do a lot of things right. Um, you know, there, there's always room for improvement, but I, I really have no preference in terms of PPA or APP. Okay. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, well, I've been busy. We got uh, a lot going on. Oh, we got a ton going on. Um, and uh, summer plans. Let's just talk about that. Uh, yep. I don't know when this is going to air. Um, probably, actually, this is probably going to air when um, already in Boise. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's so go. we are uh, we are packing up for the summer. Yep. Uh, not the full summer, but eight weeks. June and July, we're going to Boise, Idaho. And if you haven't been there, it is a, uh, it's actually a really nice place. And mm-hmm. Kaden, you'll, you'll, I'll get you'll to get experience to it. it in a but, little bit. Uh, yeah, but it is cooler than here. And Thank God. we're excited about that. It's getting into the hundreds here in Arizona in May. It's going to be climbing up. It's been hot. It's gonna be, I can't lie. It's going to be climbing, climbing up slow, slowly and slowly. I've been back for two days and um, it's a <laughs> so, lot. It's a lot. Yeah. So uh, summer plans going there. Uh, we are going for a family trip um, slash a teaching trip. So we have a couple five day intensives coming up, coming up one in um, June, one in July, one in June and one in July. Um, actually, we'll see. But uh, if you are interested in a training for us, I think we have about a couple more spots in the July. And if you're between four to five, kind of four or five that kind of level and you really want to take your game to the next level we have a couple more spots and if you can't make it in that one we we're offering and doing more five-day intensives um throughout the year yep caden uh, and i together Woo! as a teaching coaching team let's go look so at so oh. we're super excited to offer that um for those of you who've been watching this channel maybe thinking about um training uh, developing your game especially if you're playing tournaments and, or you feel like, you know, you, you really want to get better. Yeah. Maybe you plateaued. We would love to see you. We'd love It'll to be see a you. great experience for all. That's for sure. Um, I think honestly with the intensives, like people ask me, it, it's, it's hard to tell people how much I love the intensives yeah. without sounding like I'm being biased, but mm-hmm. just as an instructor teaching the intensives are so rewarding not only for the student, but as the instructor as well, um, because you really do get to dive deep into pickleball, unlike any other clinic, you know, like, yeah. trust me, I've taught for level up. I've taught a lot of different camps and there's nothing, nothing quite like an intensive. So I know that sells, sounds a little bit biased coming from me, but I absolutely love it. So I'm super excited. Yeah, dude. So we're super excited. If you would like to, um, sign up or inquire about a two day or five day intensive in the future. Make sure you click the description below. Hit us up. Hit us up. Um, actually, right at, or right before that, Caden, you're you're actually going to New Mexico. Correct. To teach a couple of um, clinics, actually with Augie Ga. Correct, Mundo. Rise, rising star. So, really good friends with him. I'm yeah. sure you're excited about that. Yeah. Um, we're yeah. well, we're skipping Dallas. So Dallas is this week. PPA Dallas. Um, I, I love a lot of the tournaments, you know, Dallas is, <laughs> is, is one of, uh, probably my least favorites in terms of stops for the pro tour, but yeah, it's nothing to do with Texas. It's the fact that it's Rockwall, Texas, because it's called the Dallas, to- Dallas open and this tournament's in Rockwall, which is like an oh, hour and a half yeah, from yeah, both yeah, airports. Yeah. So it's just a little chaotic it's not as little out there little out there yeah yeah you know but yeah we're skipping it we're gonna go teach in new mexico it's gonna be me and augie gut it should be a lot a lot of fun so awesome man that's really we'll be cool there for the weekend that's really cool uh for those of you who you know don't know augie he's a rising star i would call it so yeah. um and next he, big thing and and he's a he's a great guy we call him og dog back home you know okay back mm-hmm. home here in in arizona <laughs> yep um okay so we got that 
Uh, let's talk about upcoming tournaments as well, too. Uh, you're yep. going back to the Bay Area. Back to the Bay. K right? in the Bay. So uh -huh. there's, a, there's a PPA in Sacramento. And I know there, there was Sacramento, California, which is Correct. the capital, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Is Sacramento is the I capital should, should of California. Coming, you coming should. California. Correct. But, um, yeah, so PPA Sacramento. I think this is the first PPA because I know there was APPs there. Correct. But that's PPA interesting. PPA has never been in the Bay Area before. PPA mm -hmm. in the maybe yeah first PPA in the Bay Area. Correct. So that's that's really cool. That'll be see. really fun. At Lifetime, uh, who are you partnering up with? What what do you got uh, for that? Yeah, so I am going to be playing with Blaine Havernier, who is a, a pretty recently signed PPA player. Um, he's a great dude from the SoCal area, SoCal yeah. and Texas area. Tennis player. Tennis player. Uh, um, I think he went to UCLA. R really? Uh, -huh. I don't. I don't know how much he played at UCLA or whatnot, but I think he was a part of the team and whatnot. Right. Um, not sure what his minutes looked like, but he was a former tennis player. Great dude. Great player. Um, I'm really excited to play with him. This is actually kind of like my last tournament um, of like my of like the last four or five tournaments that I've played where I'm kind of just trying new partnerships out, just mm. kind of see what I like and whatnot. And then after that, I'm, I'm probably going to be playing most of my tournaments with Onik, which will be oh, nice. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, is it really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, and we're going to, we're going to talk about the Onik partnership yep. um, coming up. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So PPA SAC, we will. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. I'm also playing oh, with Michelle ahead. Esquivel for mixed. I uh, can't leave Michelle out. She's a living legend of the sport. Um, you know Michelle? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Michelle. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. We, so, we go back. Uh, we go back. Way back. Pretty far. We go way back. Yeah. yeah. So I've known Michelle for a long time. Um, or originally met her to, just through teaching pickleball, and uh, she's been a great friend of mine. Um, her and Rob Cassidy are yes. some of the greatest people on the planet, and I love hanging out with them. So uh, I'm excited to play with Michelle. All right, dude. So Blaine and Michelle. Super awesome. PPA SAC, and Blaine. I get to be back home. Yeah, that's awesome. You know? So that's uh, that's going to be early June, first week of June. Yep. Yep. Early yep. June. And then I get to uh, I'll be staying home a week after in the city in San Francisco with my with my familia. Awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I can translate. That's actually family for Spanish. Oh yeah. Yep. If you guys so, didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, you know, just, just let <laughs> you know. Uh, multilingual here. That's right. Multicultural here mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kaden is known for being um, Chinese and not white. <laughs> Right? Bingo! No, only uh, half. Only half. Okay, so uh, let's get to the Ben match now. Let's talk about that. Oh, um, we really, really quick here. Um, this was a tough match. Look at this. Uh, I still have nightmares about is, it. This is Caden here. Oh, what with, it do? With, with Onik. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, little sir, open stand serve there. Bang. Uh, we got a, a little. Um, high five action. Oh yeah. This is a uh, Colin John's in the corner here. You can tell he's very, very happy. He just lost <laughs> that point. Yup. Um, nine, and, nine uh, in the third game right there. Oh yeah. yeah. A little, this looks like a third shot drive actually. That's Katie. exactly what it, it's looking like a third shot drive set up for a big poach winner. Yeah, That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Um, little, and your face is a little interesting there. Well, you don't Kaden. have to look at that. Well, maybe just look at the, the shot, the lunge, the balance, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, but those are, those <laughs> are good to look at. Yeah. I mean, look at wide stance. Uh, if you're, if you're just listening to this, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at some pictures mm -hmm. on center court when Caden Nemoff, uh, played with, um, Onik Lohani yeah, with Onik Lohani against the Johns. And yeah. we're going to get into that in a second little, uh, Forehand topspin volley there. Oh yeah. Um, Scoreline though, again so close yet so far, Caden. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about this match. But um, this is actually, I believe, only the second time. Is this correct, Caden? That you got to play against Penn and Colin? Correct. So the first time it was with Michael Lloyd. Correct. And you, it wasn't a great game. It was not a great, not a great right? match I, at I, all. I remember. I think that he yeah. he uh, he did a third shot topspin lob to end the. And the first game, yeah, first yeah, game. I remember that as well. <laughs> okay, so, but anyways, uh, yeah. So if you're not, you know, seeing this um, live, so um, we got the uh, the ba the bagel, yeah, bagel in the first game with the cream cheese. No. We, we got the, we got the Johns brothers, um, you know, bageling guys, eleven zero. Yeah, and you guys come back to win the second game, eleven seven. 
and then you and then the Johns actually squeeze out the third game 12 10. Yeah, had match point. So, uh, had match point. You had match point on serve, actually. Well, we were down 3 9. Uh huh. Came all the way back, made it 10 9. And then we. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> okay, Choked. so um, let's Choked. talk about that. So for, for those of you who listen to us frequently on the pod, you know that Caden and I do this uh, for a living, sh- you know, showing you the things that we learn, instructional videos. We're here to teach you, Damn you know, right. at, the, at the highest level, um, Caden, you know, we've, this is something we've seen, you know, you working on your game. Yep. Working on your game, working really hard, drilling. And I think I need some water. I'm going to choke again. For, for these uh, for these opportunities though, um, to play the best of the best. Yeah. Now we can get into if Colin, or if you think um, Ben and Colin play their best or whatever. But the the reality is you had a chance. The reality yeah, is had you, a real you chance. Had a real chance. Uh, up match point. Why don't you just give us just a little? So like going into the match, I mean second time you played Ben and Colin. Yep. Um, I know that you know just one of your personal strengths i believe is like i don't you, i don't think you get nervous so you no you live for these moments hell yeah and I, lo- I love when the lights are bright yeah and i think you play best under those conditions so why don't we just talk about how you're feeling and then first game second game comes around yeah like i don't know just even mentally what's it like how I, I want players listening to go into your headspace how you're feeling after being bageled yeah and just just th- walk us through that process yeah i think it's um it's important to prepare for what you're about to do right so I, i'm pretty sure i've said in previous podcasts before that one of the things that i started doing is meditating before my matches yeah, yeah. um and it, it's not anything crazy where i'm saying any sort of crazy prayers or anything like that but I just like to sit back, close my eyes, find my center of peace, and just be able to listen to my surroundings around me, um, and kind of just pinpoint what I'm what I'm hearing and what I'm listening to, mm. just to keep my mind sharp while I'm doing it. Um, and so that's really helped me. Um, but also, like going into a match like that, it's so easy to care more about how you look on the court than. Yeah what's yeah. actually going down, right? Yeah. So one of the biggest things that, you know, I always, you know, tell myself going into a match is one, like it doesn't matter who's across that net, right? You have to be aggressive and you have to play pickleball, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, if it doesn't work, hey, we can make adjustments from there, but you can't ever going into a match just expecting your opponents to miss for you. Mm-hmm. Like, not not at not at the not top at the, level. not at the top level, yeah. right? Yeah, three zero maybe. Yeah, three zero maybe. But like at the pro level, you have to be able to make shots, and you have to be able to have shots that you trust to then use in that match. I like that, right? So you have to trust yourself. You have to know, you know, where you're most comfortable, where you're vulnerable, um, and, and just put yourself in a position to play at your strengths. And so. My first match with Onik was against Luke Wasson and Kaysen Campbell. Mm. They're both PPA kids. They're, um, I say kids, they're, what, 18, 19 years old. But kids for, the most. Kids for, the yeah, most. right. And so they're, they're good players. Um, we just kind of came out firing. We played well. And we played our version of pickleball, which was playing the smart shot and then looking to be aggressive. And yeah. we found success when we were attacking first. So we kind of just stuck with that. And then going into that match with, with Ben, um, I mean, you can see it just by the score of 0-11, like, I think we were a little flat-footed. I think we kind of just wanted to, you know, play good points and, and play smart points and and, and work them and, and make sure, you know, we could get something that was attackable. But at the end of the day, the Johns bros, like, the way they practice is they don't give you really anything to attack. You have to create offense. Mm. And that's where they've been able to be so dominant for so long is where – now players are starting to get more aggressive off the bounce with the backhand side, the forehand side. And if you can kind of create that kind of offense, you can be a little bit more dangerous against guys like that. So um, when it was live, uh, one, I want to say one of the PPA, uh, one, of the, one of the things that they do now that's actually really cool is they 
like during in between matches they have like a mic next to the bench oh. to kind of catch what you're like talking about and okay. maybe some strategic things going on yeah um so i'm a little bummed that in the in the video that they posted on youtube they actually cut it all out wow. um but when it was live on pickleball tv i think you could actually hear some of the things that we were saying and a majority of the things that we were saying was like hey if we're gonna lose we need to lose our way you know what i mean we can't just stick in the dink and get beaten you know with dink rallies we need to be aggressive we need to you know put these guys in in different places we need to make them off balance like we have to do something different and i think that was the biggest kind of that, that stepping stone that between game one and two it, yeah it, it was like we have to play our style of pickleball and that's aggressive that's you know looking yeah. to to be to attack and to uh to be aggressive in spots that they might not like and we came out gunslinging in game two and pulled it away and then almost had it in game three so okay so i really like that um i think kaden we'll see uh and those of you viewers watching maybe you can comment below if you would like to see this um i watched been really busy I, I, I watched particular parts of the match, especially that last game, but yep. it would be good to maybe go through the game at some point yeah. and, um, or the match and kind of, kind of like look at strategy things, what you could have done differently maybe for, sure. for the viewers. So if you'd like to see that in future, maybe we'll have time in Boise to do that, Caden. But I think that that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So you, you come out game two and you guys end up winning that game. Yeah. Thought process moving on to game three. Are you like, oh, shoot, I can't believe it? Are you, like, pumped up? Or are you, you know, what is your thought process going into game three after the paddle tap there? Yeah. And and then, again, we'll talk about the ending of game three. Yeah, so game two into game three, um, you know, you, you want to freak out a little bit, but also at the same time you have to stay pretty level-headed. Um, because, I mean, yeah, taking a game off of Ben and Colin is great, but, like, at the end of the day, the job's not finished, right? So um, winning a game off Ben and Colin, sure. I'm sure that's, you know, uh, a big – I mean, I wouldn't say it's not a, a big achievement for me. I mean, that's something that I've been working for for ever, you know what I mean? But yeah. also that being said, like, I'm not there to win one game. I'm there to win the match, right? So you have to stay very level-headed, Um and you and you have to kind of stick with what you were doing, right? Like, it's I, I find in pickleball so often you find something that works, mm -hmm. and then for some reason you kind of just shy away from it. You want to do something a little bit different. You want to get settled in, and like, you could see like game two to like beginning of game three. I think we went down six zero at the switch. It was looking like we were gonna get bageled again, yeah. right? And so like, it's so easy to have something that works say game over go into a new game and then just completely abandon what you were just so doing did you right guys go more passive on three so in game three. three we got yeah we kind of just went back in the dink rallies again kind of just started working the point from the like, and not being as aggressive and then once we were down 06 and we got the side switch, side change we were like what are we doing here like mm -hmm. we need to we need to get this thing going like we need to get the ball rolling and so we kind of just started playing that fast paced ball a little bit um being a little bit more aggressive again and started to work and it really started to give us momentum and yeah that last point was i've i've played that last point over and over the match point the 10 9 point like literally I, on screen or in your head on screen and in my head okay. at least at least 250 times wow yeah How many times huh okay i i would say on can uh, like on my phone i've watched it probably 70 times wow just that last point interesting yeah the, where you sped it up yeah Okay, so yeah, we'll have, maybe we'll leave a link below. Uh, shout out to the PPA for that footage. But uh, yeah, you guys can see um, Kaden play the John. But last point, uh, you're up, I believe. 10-9-2. Um, 10-9-2. Yep. There is, a, there is a pretty extended dink rally. Correct. Um, That's a good point. And, yeah, and you get a you get a ball um, that... that Kind of like thigh high. Yeah, like it's it's not the greatest dink in the world. No, you know, but you know it, it's basically attackable. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you what do you decide to do? What's your thought process? And kind of just walk us through that point and then toward to the end. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I've seen a lot of big points that players have played against Ben and Colin. Yeah. Where, you know, they play it the exact same way I do, and they take that last ball that I sped up, and they probably just dink it back, and that's fine. Um, but in my mind, like 
when I saw that ball, like it was very much a green ball that like, for me at least that day where I had taken yeah. that ball multiple times and hit that ball for winners. Yeah. Right. So I was, I saw that opportunity and you know, in the, in the quick millisecond of, of me seeing that ball bounce up towards my thigh, I was thinking, I'm not going to lose this point just by dink, dinking a ball in the net. Mm. I'm not going to lose this point by dinking this ball wide. Like I'm going to dink this. I'm going to, I'm going to win or lose this point by the shot that I did, that I choose. And, uh, that's the shot I chose. And I, I, I went kind of for Ben's left shoulder and was hoping maybe like I could kind of dip it in a little bit, but I yeah, just, yeah. I just hit it a little bit too hard at the shoulder and, uh, Ben got to just kind of watch it go like a foot and a half long. So, um, yeah, so they got the side out after that. Yeah. And then, um, how did those last two points remind me? How did those last? Well, so they were down nine ten. Um, yeah. they got, uh, an easy point out of me on a fourth ball. I took a fourth ball here that I kind of tried yeah. to go inside out on and I just mm -hmm. put it in the tape. Yeah. Um, and then Onik tried to speed up cross court, which probably wasn't the best timing for a speed up and Colin kind of just yeah kind of miss hit a counter and it just kind of went down at my left foot um then we saved a match point and I hit an overhead at Ben's face and he wasn't too happy about that and then the game the match ended on on a hands battle that I that I lost got Ben it. sped it up I countered Colin countered and then I countered one more he got it back and I got chicken winged and yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay all right so um yeah, so can you tell you know, I've watched it a million times? I know exactly what oh, happened. Oh, that's good. Man. That's good. I mean, I probably would uh, know exactly that too. Um, yeah. So, Caden, after playing them now, yeah, uh, twice. Obviously, that was a lot closer. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about their game tactically that day? What? How do you think they played? How do, do you think they? What? What percent? Um, not effort, but I mean, what, what do you think their game plan was going in, and how well do you think the Johns played? Um, I definitely don't games. think they played that well. Mm -hmm. um, I think they, I think we kind of kept them on their toes, but I wouldn't say they were like. Yeah, I mean, Ben and Colin usually get to kind of walk through their first like two matches. I don't think they were expecting us to come in, especially after bageling us the first game to be like, oh yeah, these guys are really going to challenge us and, and whatnot. They definitely got more focused and got smarter with their yeah. shot selections yeah. going into the third game. Like Colin was very aggressive in the first game and Ben was very aggressive in the first game and they were kind of going at us. And then as like the points started to get a little bit tighter, like Colin only dinked mm. Ben only dinked unless he got a ball in the air. Like they really weren't like, and you can tell like most first rounds, they're kind of just like horsing around, hitting shots off their toes and still managing yeah. to make it work yeah. because it just, they're that good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it was cool to kind of see them. They, they locked in, lock in yeah. and then also yeah. like yeah. have to take a time out and like, you know, cause they do this thing. Um, and, and Ben's actually talked about it before, but Ben and Colin, whenever the other team takes a timeout, they stay on the court and it's kind of like holding, like we call it in baseball, holding the mound, right? Okay. Like you'll see a pitcher, like when a pitcher is like about to pitch and then the uh -huh. batter calls time, usually the pitcher will step off the mound. Okay. Right. Cause batter call time, the pitcher gets time too, Got right? It. Before Got the next it. pitch. But some pitchers, like when a batter, you know, like calls timeout they'll just stand on the mound and wait until the batter gets in the batter's so, box so again kind of rushes them it kind of right? yeah right like in a way you're kind of they're kind of just like oh yeah like we're good we don't need a timeout go ahead take your time out we don't need it got it got you it. know yeah and so kind of just like stealing momentum from them and having colin call like a frustrated timeout that was kind of fun and seeing them go sit on the bench and i'm like <laughs> for, for the for for some odd reason though it was kind of funny they called the timeout and somehow some way they were still outside they were still waiting on the court longer than we were <laughs> okay all right cool man yeah all right so i forgot what i just asked you um, i asked you yeah yeah so I, I, yeah that's what i did i asked you about how ben and colin played yeah um and you said the third game that they definitely picked it up mm -hmm. you can see their shot selection and choices so you said Colin became Colin. <laughs> yep, Colin kind of right. just went back into that consistent, and then, you know. So it's interesting. I don't miss. Um, 
Yeah, it's interesting that they, you know, that they locked in. I mean, not interesting. I mean, that that's what's called for if they have to win that match. Yeah. Um, and uh, so any any main takeaways from you, Caden, like um, experiential wise, um, like mentality and also, you know, when you have another big match like that in the future against a top seed or something like that, what, yeah. do, what are some just... What are some takeaways for you? Um, it's important to, you know, trust yourself, trust your partner, trust your equipment. Um, you know, uh, one of the biggest things that, that you know, uh, I've talked a lot with Augie about is, you know, when you're playing on the tour, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be, you know, friends and nice with everybody. But as soon as you get on the court, like you have to have uh, kind of a killer me mentality. You know what I mean? So... Um, one of the biggest adjustments that I've been trying to make, you know, while playing is like, Hey, like as, 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 as nice as I can be, you know, like in a way, like I want to be a jerk on the court. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to win. I'm here to, yeah. you know, I'm here to win big matches. I'm here to compete and you know, um, it's nothing personal. I just, I, I I'm, I'm here cause I have a job to do, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, just trying to take it a little bit more seriously in terms of like, Hey, like I'm not, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to, to kick butt. Yeah. No, I like to it. Kick man. major butt. Yeah. So, I like it. Um, um spe yeah. Speaking of technology, mm -hmm. you know, we'll get to that. Yep. But, uh, you know, so you've been, um, you know, you're kind of not in limbo. I don't know what the word is, but you're trying out some different paddles right Correct. now. Currently, yeah. currently unsigned. Um, um, and um, pickleball you, pro pickleball is expensive. So if any of you guys are in the market for a pro who does pickleball for yeah. everything, so you know you're you're testing a lot of paddles. Yeah. Um, you know you've been with Selkirk. Um, you know for the past year, mm -hmm. and it's been great. And you have you know you've been I've seen you hit with the uh, Pro XR. Correct. Um, you've hit with Yolas a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what other paddles you've hit with, but um tried a few different yeah companies yeah so that's what you got going on right now and mm -hmm. you you know we're playing with the gen 3 yep yola uh, against yola mr yola himself ben yep. johns <laughs> yep um where was that the scorpius wait what were you playing with? i was using i was actually yeah i was playing with the paddle uh i was playing with a paddle that was designed by the guy in front of me Colin Johns. Yeah. Okay. So it was a four, 16 or 14? 16. Okay. So 16, 14 is Anna's. Got it. 16 millimeter Colin Johns edition, um, Gen 3. We we just reviewed that um, not too long ago on our channel. Yep. And now there's a lot of buzz and we may be talking about this in a future podcast specifically, but, you know, obviously they got banned recently. Yes, they did. Okay. So <laughs> there's a lot of- the USAPA. A lot of controversies happening with that. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the Gen 3s? Do you think they should be banned? Um, you know, I kind of I see both sides. I kind of see, you know, the game uh, getting quicker and quicker. And we talked about this on the in the car. There has to be some limit on, on pop and power, obviously. There is. Yeah. Well, but well there is- but I, I don't know. I feel like it's it's it could continue to get moved, and I just feel like they might have to just think of different ways to to test things a little bit more efficiently. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I mean, obviously, we're me and Jordan Yeager, or you know, Jordan Yeager yeah. really is reviewing all the paddles on this channel. So right. we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. But my thoughts is, uh, yeah, games is getting faster, but. You know that being said, um, the uh, the paddle that we're using against Ben, you had some hands battles there. Yeah. Um, and obviously, with that paddle, you have extra pop. There's some heat on that on that paddle off your counters. Um, what do you just What do you feel just uh, for, for um, about the about the Ben? And uh, <laughs> what are you going to be kind of just using, experimenting with of this next? You know until we find out what's going to happen with uh, the Gen 3s. Yeah, I mean, well, first things first, I, I've actually really liked the Gen 3 for the time I've been using it, um, which hasn't been really that long. Um, but I think it's a great paddle um, in terms of power. Um, you know, obviously the hand speed is, is it, it helps just, you know, being and having a little bit more in the paddle to help you out. But I would also say, like, because I'm using a 16 millimeter, 
uh, that I get a good amount of dwell in the paddle as well, which allows me to absorb and kind of soften the ball up too. So I would say it's overall a, a very, a very good paddle. Um, you know, and I was telling Craig like, Hey, like if you're someone who's not signed, like, you know, like why would you, you know, yeah. at, at the pro level, why would you not try and use it? You know, unless of course it just doesn't, it's just, it's not, and that's the thing, right? Is you hear so many, Oh, it, it makes this player so much better. Yes. I have seen people, you know, uh, become, you know, better players using that paddle, but it's not just the paddle, right? Like at the end of the day, like you have to find a paddle that mm. enhances your game, yeah. right? And so the Scorpius that I've been using, I really like it because it's a shorter ha- a shorter face. I like a smaller face. The handle is longer, but it's not too long, right? Yeah. Um, and it's got a great mixture of pop and control. Yeah. You know, and that's exactly what I want. I want that p- a slightly poppier paddle that still has a little bit of control because, yeah. like I said, I like the control. Mm-hmm. The pop is what I want, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I would say for me, that paddle has really helped me with kind of like my game and whatnot because it fits everything that I'm looking for in a paddle. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean everybody's just going to be able to pick up that paddle and say, oh, my God, I'm a 5.0 now. Yeah. You know, but I will say I have seen people who, you know, have specific shots and maybe they weren't really as consistent as they were Mm. until they got that Yola. Yeah. So, um, so I also have some Arizona friends out here that I play with that have not stopped crying since I've picked up that paddle. So, (laughs) you know who you are. Well, uh, yeah. So, uh, well, we'll keep you updated on that. Obviously, big controversy there. Um, now the Johns ended up getting beaten. Yeah. In that tournament. Um, by and Matt Wright and Federico. By, new partnership. by Fed and Matt. Um, mm-hmm. And is that a solid uh, partnership that we see? Um, or is I don't that just know. a one off uh, kind of thing? I don't know how solid it'll be. I know Federico's playing a few different tournaments with a few different people. He's actually playing one with Augie. Is he? Um, I don't know which Ooh, tournament exactly. Is he? Yeah. Wow. But Federico that's and Augie uh, are going to play one team. together. Yeah. Like so that. I think that'll be really good. I think Federico's going to probably try. I mean, he's a good enough player where he'll, where he'll still be able to get good partnerships, yeah. you know, um, even as he's kind of just figuring it out. Yeah. Uh, it's very different, you know, Federico looking for a partner than me, right? But like, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's gonna. I think he's gonna try out a few different types of partnerships. Okay, so yeah. um, obviously, you know, I don't know. I don't have a tally on how many times the Johns have been beat this year. It's got to be at least three. Three or four, yeah, right? I would say. So, um, just want to talk about that. Uh, we mentioned it. Um, now the Johns have been so dominant. You know, the past how many years now? Two, three years. Two, yeah. three years. Uh, and I still, obviously, um, you know, number one team. They're still dominating and still winning the majority of matches, but yeah. uh, we are seeing um, them getting beat more and bit. more often yeah. um, by different kinds of teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thought processes, or j- what are your thoughts, not thought process, what are your thoughts on that? And also, um, you know, wh- why do you see that happening? Why are we seeing a little bit more losses? And do you think that they need to kind of switch anything up? Like not, you know, not, not jumping to Ben and getting a new partner, but do you think they need to do something differently or you think it's just something the other teams are, are catching on to? I mean, when you've been as dominant as, uh, as the Johns brothers have been over the last few years, um, every, every sport is going to develop, you know what I mean? Um, and I think, there's so much tape on the Johns brothers and what they do so well and how they've been winning for so long that, Mm. you know, when there's so much tape of them out, you can, you can watch that and you can study that. You know what I mean? I'm not here saying I've watched every single Ben and Collins match, you know, but you know exactly what they do and exactly why they win. You know what I mean? And even when Riley and Matt first started playing together that one year, right, mm-hmm. to kind of challenge them, yeah, and they right. did every now and then. There were there were times where Matt and Riley were just firing on all cylinders, and it was working, and and then they won. Yeah. Right. And then. Um, and then they got beat pretty badly for the rest of the year. And then they got badly, yeah, right. And then they got badly beaten for the rest of the year. But and then even the next year, right? They tri- they went into year two, and it wasn't working, and that's why it broke up, right? But like. I think the couple times Matt and Matt and Riley beat him, it was because they were just more aggressive on him, 
Yeah. You know, and I think yep. that's a style of play that, you know, if you're playing well, it can it can do damage on them. You yeah. know, you just have to go out there and like do it. You just have to execute it. You have to pick good spots. You have to focus on the, your precision. Like yeah. you have to be a hundred percent focused and in the match a hundred percent of the time. Like yeah. you really can't slack off in a match like that against the Johns brothers. Cause if you do for two seconds or you yep. care more about one thing than the other thing, like it's, it's not going to work. All right. So the second question I, I kind of alluded to the, uh, what do you think? Do you think they need to, uh, change or develop anything in the game? Or do you think that uh, players are just getting – well, players are getting better. Players are for sure getting um, better. But what, what do you think uh, of their game? If you were to analyze from a coach's eye, their game, obviously nothing to panic about. No. But what, what do you what do you see? Um, I would I would say, you know, obviously they, they do a lot of – they do 99% of things perfectly. You know what I mean? They do things really well. Um, but it was funny because – like I said, first game they killed us. Yeah. And one of the things that um, that Colin was doing really well was he was mm, speeding up. Interesting. And he was speeding up like at me with like disguising di- disguising speed ups. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he bodied me on one and <laughs> maybe another one, but like he was he was speeding up and he was speeding up well and with deception and it was yeah. it was hard to read. Yeah. Um, and then in that second and third game, like. He kind of just stopped. So um, I would say, you know, being a little bit more aggressive because at the end of the day, like, yep. those guys' hands are so good. Like, if they speed up first. Exactly. You know, and, they, and like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like they can't clean it up. You know what I mean? So um, I love their, like, idea of, like, hey, we can, we can trust our patterns and we can make them decide to do something stupid and then we can kill them. But, like, also at the same time, like, with those types of hands, like, why not just try it here every now and then and see if it works? Like, I don't know. Yep, that's you know? exactly uh, that's exactly right. As I study their game, um, you know, and, and that's the thing that makes it not tough on them. They can beat ninety nine point nine percent of players with the same exact exact game plan. Exactly, the, it, it's tough when someone's attacking you all the time, and your counterattacks have to be on point because the patterns are going to be shorter. Correct. Think patterns are going to be shorter. So um, that's really interesting. But yeah, I mean, looking at it from a coach's eye, um, I would like to see Colin get a lot more aggressive, uh, particularly off the bounce. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we see Ben working on a two hander speed up. But honestly, it's like Colin, he should be doing the same thing. I'd like to see him dink off the bounce. Uh, you know, or attack off the bounce on the backhand side from the middle. And maybe maybe Ben doesn't have to come over as much at certain times. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what I see. I mean, this is was my whole gripe with, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but with, with JW, you know, back in the day, his hands being so good and really him letting kind of Dylan initiate. Yeah. I mean, JW's hands are probably one of the fastest in the world, so... Even if JW started, you know, speeding up, you know, I yeah. thought like, man, he should just, he could clean up his own, he could clean up his own mess all the yeah. time. So, um, but that is the thing I'm going to be looking at. It's going to be really interesting to see, um, obviously like the role that they play where Colin just is a backboard. Yeah. Let's, let's Ben dictate works well. Right. But I think if they can, yeah, we're just going to have to see. We're mm-hmm. just going to have to see. But really the game plan and the game style is they let you attack first and then they counter punch right. unless Ben can attack. Right. Um, but it's not like against the high, high level players. It's not like Colin is taking his chances or anything. No. Speeding up the ball. No, I know. Yeah. You know, I used to be a lot more aggressive in my opinion. Um, and then I think at a certain point, Ben was kind of just like, Hey, we don't even need this stupid shit. So, Oh, uh, uh, I didn't say anything there. Uh, Ben said it. I didn't say it. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think, I I don't know. I think Colin should be more, should look to be more aggressive. I I, like, he was eating me up on it, Mm. eating me up on it. There were three balls. I think he sped up at me and I, I don't think I, I think my body touched more of the ball than my okay, paddle. All right, I'm serious. I'm gonna have to watch that first game. Though. Yeah, first game was hideous, and, and like, I mean, I I made a bunch of dumb mistakes too, honestly, yeah. in, in that match. So, um, 
you know, one of the biggest takeaways, you know, that Augie mentioned was like, hey, dude, like, I watched your match back and you played great. You still made a lot of mistakes, but like, yeah. you made a lot of mistakes and you still had match point on the number one team in the world. Like, there's there's a lot to be pleased with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Awesome. So, you, you, you know, I'm hungry to cut out some of those mistakes and be more consistent and be better. Um, uh, I, I have a line tattooed on my body and it says, I'll be better than I was. And that's exactly what Did you what get I, that tattoo? What? You just got, wait, what? You have a line tattooed on your body? I have a tattoo. That's saying a, that? Saying that on my body, yeah. Oh. Where, on your, on your leg? I can't tell you where it is. <laughs> wait, are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. Oh it's on my, my leg. Yeah. <laughs> it's on my leg. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Okay. So what we got is, yeah, so the, thanks for sharing your experience. How was it playing with uh, Onik? Oh, I love playing with Onik. Um, that was our first time. That was our yeah. only tournament that we had kind of committed to. And, uh, you know, like I said, there was kind of like there's been four or five tournaments in a row where I've played with a different partner just to kind of test out different partnerships, see what I like, see what I don't like. Um, and, dude, I mean, I got to warm up with Onik the day before the tournament. And, like, even just our reps and our practice games were – super good um and we were super comfortable and confident together for literally first time playing and so i think there's a lot to grow off of um the only thing i wish is i wish onik lived out here in arizona so where, we could, where is he from he lives in minnesota mm. so he gets to kind of play with the alhuni brothers mota and mo um Pretty good yeah yeah oh wow. wow uh both ppa guys uh their brothers and then um minnesota has a, c a couple other guys and, and some good women out there too yeah uh sammy lee Tyler Hong, um, hmm. uh, Mini Ninja Gen Tavernier, hmm. um, they've they have some good players out there. Okay. So, cool, um, but yeah, we we've now committed to, uh, I want to say four more at the tournament at, at at the at the awesome. at the moment. I want to say okay. maybe five. Yeah. Okay, yeah, awesome. Might man. play San Clemente, and then we got Vegas, Atlanta. There's another Atlanta tournament, and then Kansas City. Uh, so yeah we're gonna try and run as many as we can because you know yeah we're, we're also right. under the same agent peak yeah. agency okay. and so um but yeah our agent came out and watched that watched our match and came out for the week and he was like dude like it would be stupid for you guys not to not to play together again yeah so might, might as well uh see how see how far you can go huh? just gotta build on it now i like that <laughs> just gotta build okay Cool. Well, um, I think that's all I got, Kaden. Anything else uh, you want to let the viewers know? I know this is a shorter pod, but uh, we will be, or at least I will be in Boise very soon. So, yep. so stay up to date with all of our content. We have a lot of teaching videos coming out, a lot of match play videos where I'm commentating coming out, um, learning uh, learning videos as well, strategy, technique, and stuff. Uh, anything you got, Kaden? Uh, yeah, I, uh, am playing PPA Sacramento next weekend, the 4th to the 9th, I believe. Um, and then I actually will be back home in the Bay Area in San Francisco the week after. So if you guys live in the Bay, um, I'll probably be in the city playing at local courts, uh, again. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys out there. My sister is graduating from dental school. So congratulations, Mac. You suck. Um, and, uh. Yeah, we'll see you guys very, very soon, all right? All right. Deuces! See you, everybody.